My name is Brian and today I'm going to be putting a ladder rack on a 2007 Ford Escape. Now they're also made for other years. This one happens to come from True Racks which has what looks like at least half a dozen websites. So I bought this off vanladderracks.com. Real nice guy, plenty of support. Um, he has a video but his video doesn't go into a whole lot of detail so I wanted to film this process from start to finish. I received the rack yesterday. This is pretty much what showed up inside a box. There was some hardware in here. I'll find the hardware in a minute. There were four pages of instructions that are pretty generic. Um, the basic concept is unwrap it and put it together. It's partially assembled. This is a nice rack. I, I wanted something that I could depend on to carry um, ladders on top of my Ford Escape. And, um, you know, if you're in the inspection, insurance adjusting, handyman business, um, you may find Ford Escape hybrids to be a fantastic little vehicle. I think 30 miles to the gallon is kind of hard to argue with, and uh, I'm sure I'll lose a little bit, but 27 miles to the gallon sure beats what my F-150 gets. Even with a V6, it, you know, it, it gets 17 miles to the gallon with a tailwind. So anyway, let me get to unwrapping this, and then I'll find the hardware. So it includes some uh, hardware, some, I don't know what you call these bolts, but they go in and they, they're sort of like riveting bolt, riveting nuts or blind nuts. And then there's some little pads for the feet to land on. So this will give you kind of an idea what it, uh, what the finished project will look like. So what I'm going to do is, um, I'm going to do this a little bit differently than what they recommend, um, just because. So what I'm what I'm going to do first is I'm going to mount the back. I think that'll sit there. All right. What I'm going to do is I'm going to mount the back. Yeah, that's not right. There we go. So I'm going to mount the back, and then I'm going to attach this and locate where this is going to go, and then I'll I'll mount this because I have to drill the hole. Um, so, uh, but I think this is going to look really good when I'm done. If I have something to complain about, it's that this is not pre-drilled and that I have to put this together and then drill it myself, and that's kind of lame, but whatever. So this project does involve drilling holes in the roof, and so I've invested in some inexpensive drill collars. These are sometimes called drill stops. In this particular case, they're called cheap drill stops because the Allen screws that are that come with them are just crap, and they strip out from the wrench. I've drilled my quarter inch holes to start, and now I'm gonna step up to half inch. But not with this drill bit, because it's worn out. So, what I'm gonna do now is, um, I had to change the drill bit, so I'm using a cheap Harbor Freight drill bit, and the stock collars I bought from Harbor Freight have cheap set screws that strip out the first time you tighten them, so I couldn't get it back off. Which is a real shame because I bought it specifically for the half inch stock. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a tape flag, which is poor man's stock. And just be real careful. sucks too so I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stop and I'm gonna go get a drill bit and a collar from Home Depot where they might actually be worth a shit. Um, this set doesn't seem to have the same cheap set screws as the last set. It's just amazing how the quality varies from one unit to the next with Harbor Freight. But uh, what I'm doing is I'm using it to stop so I don't drill into the headliner or drill too deep into the body. Um,
Like that. Well, let's see what we just did. No harm, no foul. Even if the stupid collar didn't stay put where it was supposed to. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to reset it. So after you drill, you're going to have all little bits of metal shavings. And there's a couple different ways to get rid of them. What I like to do is use an air hose and just blow them off. I've already blown them off. Um, I forgot to video it. So anyway, what you don't want to do is don't brush it with your hand because these things are like little splinters and they will dig into your skin and you will hate life. You are far, far better off to, if you have to, use a towel. But again, you're going to get little metal shards everywhere. So the best thing to do is blow them off with an air hose. Alright, so these are self-securing um, nuts. And essentially they go in Some of them easier than others, and then you use this to secure them. So it looks like I've got a little bit more stuff to drill under there. No idea what it is, but I'm going to have to drill through it because it's in my way. And so once you've got that in there, you just do this. So at that point, I have secured that one. And it's really the same system that's used on the rest of these. Probably could get it a little tighter, and I'll do that when I um, put, the, put the final pieces in. So there's a support in here, and I've got to come a little deeper. You can hear the drill loading so you know you get close. Let's see what's going on here. Really need to get closer. I'm almost, I've almost done So I think we're there. Yeah, that should be good.
I gotta hold that with something else. That's gonna kill my hand. I was hoping to get it a little tighter, but that isn't going to happen. So now I got to deal with this spot. Let's see if I can work around that. option I see is to move it because there happens to be a beam right here there's some kind of a support in the edge of it's right there I ain't gonna be able to drill through the edge of it so I'm gonna have to seal that which is this is just not very pretty but is what it is So always start these by hand this bolt and I don't know what it is. So I'm gonna go find another bolt.
So we're at about four hours into this, maybe five hours. I've been working on this, it feels like forever. It's now noon when I didn't want to be working on this, but I'm making progress. I had to go buy a replacement bolt because uh, hardware is just not that great of quality these days anymore. All right, that's going to require a second drilling. But this one should be okay. Sorry, I got an ant on my foot. Where the hell these things keep coming from? So there's that one in. Beautiful. And I got to redrill. There's the deeper piece there. I did learn that there's only two of these nuts on each location. So I screwed up on the other side, but I'll I'll put an extra bolt in and I'm just gonna make, make nice with that corner. So uh, let me get this drilled and then I'll finish it up and move to the front. So before I go any further, I'm gonna go ahead and start plugging up the holes I'm not gonna use, which is all the original factory holes. I'm just gonna put a screw back in them. It doesn't really matter. I may change my mind and wanna put a better screw in at some point. So I'm using 3M, 4200. Now this comes in a 3200 which is real sticky, 4200 which is almost permanent, and 5200 which will take the material off with it. So don't use 5200 because you will never get it back out again. And you only need to put a dab of this in here. It's going to act as a thread sealant. It is a polyurethane based adhesive so it is water activated for cure and it is like most 3M products, it is an absolutely wonderful adhesive. This is probably one of the best sealants I've ever found. Now I'm just going to drive these in. And I don't have to really torque them, I just want to drive them all the way down. I will torque them if I need to. And the reason I use a glove is so I can just kind of clean up and be done with it. All right, so next I've uh, switched cameras because the other camera's battery is dead and I don't think they're interchangeable. So next I'm putting the rear poles on so I can get an idea how far forward the front bracket goes. Normally you would fully assemble this and put it up here, but I'm working by myself, so I'm working creatively. Um, go get my impact gun.
Yeah, there's some wiggle room back here. this off and drill it. I'm a good foot in front of uh, the factory mounts, which makes me a little nervous, but I, I think it'll be okay. I'm going to actually look on the inside and see what's going on in here. I think it'll be okay, but it's going to be tight. may wind up with a bulge in the headliner. Hmm, we'll figure it out. I think it looks good, even if it is a little bit on the weird side. So the next step is to mark this and then mount it. having two ladders it makes it much easier to work both sides of the vehicle. Yeah, that put a little tiny hole in the headliner. That's irritating. Maybe I'll try to get the stupid collar to work again.
and everything you touch is hot because it's in the sun. So you just got to work quickly. At one point, I took the tool over and dipped it in the water because it was so stinking hot. I've got a nice pool sitting over there. And I did wind up putting four holes in the headliner. It just is what it is. So once it stops spinning, that's, that's the point to back it out. And that's actually what's damaging the threads, is it's just, they're not, it's not designed for this amount of torque. So I'm going to go dip this in the water and I'll be right back. All right, last one. Normally I would do this when it's cooler, but I'm, we're supposed to get some nasty. So as I was saying, normally I'd do this when it's cooler, but we're supposed to get some storms tonight. I don't feel like having this uh, sit out in the rain. All right, the tool and the washers just went in the recycle bin. Bye-bye. All right, so as before, I'm just going to circle this with 4200, which is a polyurethane sealant. And then I'm just going to stick this on top. It just needs to sit there for the moment. Go do the other side. So now I'll put some lo thread locker. Uh, this is 271 from Loctite. It's good stuff. It's a permanent thread locker, and I'm just going to add it to the bolts and get these started. Always hand start bolts. Something my dad taught me a long time ago, and he was right. You will regret it if you don't. You will cross thread bolts if you do not start them by hand. Just words of wisdom. Now you don't have to thread them all the way in, but you do need to get them a couple of turns.
All right, so next I'm gonna get these rods in place. So that uh, carriage bolt that snaps shouldn't have snapped. But these have the same markings as Home Depot, which means they're basically crap hardware. That's irritating. So the last thing that needs to be done is this has to be drilled, and I can now see why. It's supposed to be aluminum, we'll find out. Yeah, it looks like it's aluminum, it's drilling real easy. It's done. To tighten down all my all my uh, adjustment bolts in the back. So I'm gonna actually do that. bolts.
All right, so at this point, the roof rack is installed. Some cheap fasteners, uh, some little minor issues, but overall, it's a nice product. It was about $380 shipped. Um, and uh, I'm real happy with it. I've still got some little accessories to put in. I've got a couple extra um, ladder tabs that need to be installed. So I'll figure out how I want that stuff arranged. And, uh, and I've got to go to Home Depot for the third time today. I needed a drill bit first time, a couple bolts the second time, and now I need another couple bolts because of the ones I have snapped. Uh, I had two bolts snap on me, which is really irritating because it's just cheap hardware. Um, I buy all my hardware from Bolt Depot and I don't have problems with their hardware. The only hardware that consistently fails on me is the crap that Home Depot sells in their captive brand crowned bolt, which is junk. It's like recycled tin cans or something. Um, it's, it's marked grade 5 and it might be grade 0.5. It, it, it easily snaps and grade 5 shouldn't do that. So, anyway, I'm going to uh, pack up the toys, get a fresh bottle of cold water, go to Home Depot and buy a dollar worth of flipping hardware so I can finish this project up and be done with it. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed my video and I hope this encourages you to do more with your escape. Um, you know, this isn't limited to just hauling racks. This would be a fantastic canoe rack. Way stronger than anything else they sell on the market and less than what the big fancy brand names are and there ain't no plastic on here except for these end caps. So thanks for watching. Have a great